Well, there we go. <clears throat> Hello, everyone. Wow, look at that. We don't have much latency today. That's fantastic. Uh, how's everyone doing this afternoon? Uh, I'm Doug. This is Reclaiming Retro. Uh, and I'll tell you what, we're going to do a surprise stream here. Uh, this was unplanned. This is very impromptu. Uh, and so the idea here is we're going to watch uh, something called the Heritage Auction. Now, this is an auction house. And they auction all sorts of things. I mean, anything you can imagine that would be considered collectible, uh, they auction them off. And today, uh, actually through this weekend, uh, they are going to be doing a video game auction, and a retro video game auction. So I thought it would be fun to watch along and see uh, what games they're selling uh, and some of the ridiculously crazy prices people are going to pay uh, for basically a complete in-box version of a game uh, and most often a completely sealed game. So a game that was never actually opened and never removed from its shrink wrap. Um that is a controversial subject. Uh, there are a lot of people who uh, are not fond of the sealed video game uh, hobby uh, or perhaps uh, best described as uh, investment vehicle because a surprisingly large amount of people, maybe not so surprising, who are in this scene uh, look at these games not as video games but as investment vehicles like a stock or a bond. Uh, and I don't see it that way. Uh, I'm not a fan of romanticizing uh, retro games as investment vehicles. But nonetheless, it's a thing. We can't pretend it doesn't exist. So I thought what I would do is maybe try and put a twist on this, that we're going to watch along the auction and kind of ooh and ah at it, but not look at it from the perspective of an investor, uh, but just someone who loves video games. And let's uh, use it as an opportunity to walk down memory lane and maybe remember uh, some of the oh, the interesting games from years gone by. Now, for the first part of this, for the Nintendo part, uh, we'll actually have the ability to fire up the games they're selling in an emulator uh, and take a look at them and remember what they were like. Uh, maybe that'll add to the intrigue as to why things are being sold for what they are. We'll see. Uh, but nonetheless, I think it was a fun little experiment. This is the idea uh, that we'll play around with, and we'll see uh, if it's any fun or not. So uh, having said that, that's the idea. Uh, I, my chat, well, you know, I'm going to pull it over here. Maybe you guys will see it. So there you go. We're pulling the curtain back a little, but I need to be able to actually see the chat. Uh, hey, Chev, how you doing? Hey, Joseph. I uh, hope you've got a nice uh, basket of uh, delightful Wendy's goodies um, in hand, and you can enjoy uh, watching the video game auction with us as well. And folks, if you're stumbling by, you saw this, maybe put in a search result, uh, welcome. Uh, I know there's a few different people that stream these auctions, uh, so I'm kind of a, a newcomer to this, uh, and hopefully I'll add some entertainment value to it and we'll have a good time. Feel free to jump in chat and talk video games with me uh, while we do this. That's really all I ask. Uh, so having said that, looks like in just a few seconds, this auction is going to begin. Looks like right now, as a matter of fact. So my expectation is that the screen will change here uh, to a live view. And we will start auctioning some games. I believe there's going to be a couple of Atari 2600 games, two of them, that we're going to open with tonight before we get started with the NES games. Uh, they are both Pac-Man which I think is fascinating uh, from my perspective. Uh, let's see. I think we have Pac-Man up here somewhere. Let's see if we can uh, open up Pac-Man uh, and remind everyone the Pac-Man, the Atari 2600 Pac-Man port, I would say uh, ensconced in infamy uh, is it was a really admittedly poorly done port. Uh, it damaged Atari immeasurably as they overproduced it and uh, were way too optimistic that just simply having the name Pac-Man on the game was going to make it a winner. Here we go. Should come up on the screen shortly. There we go. There's the Atari 2600 Pac-Man. Uh, while we're waiting for the auction to begin, uh, there we go. There it is. That's Pac-Man. I'm playing it right now. Uh, so, again, yeah, this... Atari got the rights to Pac-Man and commissioned this port uh, as, as the story goes with precious little time to actually develop the game and program it and test it. 
Uh, and given those extreme time constraints and, of course, the limitations of the Atari 2600, this is what we ended up with. Uh, we ended up with this. Uh, they're not dots. They're like dashes. Uh, there's no fruit. There's vitamin pellets. Uh, the ghosts. Well, the one thing, and I've said this before on stream, that actually they got right with Atari 2600 Pac-Man is you can barely see the ghosts. You would expect that ghosts would be difficult to see, so I will give them that much. Uh, and, of course, Heritage apologizing for the delay, simply giving up. Oh, wow. <laughs> Uh, simply giving us a little more time to uh, enjoy, <laughs> or maybe I should say experience, uh, Atari 2600 Pac-Man. So like I said, everyone was excited for this. Many people bought it, stuck it under the Christmas tree, uh, and boy, were there some disappointed youngsters uh, on Christmas morning when they woke up to this, uh, I guess, abomination is probably on board here uh, of a game. And, you know, like I said, uh, not not good times had by many. Uh, and uh, Atari paid dearly uh, for their inability to produce uh, a competent port of Pac-Man. But nonetheless, I guess you could say it is certainly considered a collectible. Uh, and for that reason, where did my chat go? Oh, here it is. Oh, it's hiding out over here. All right, there we go. <laughs> um, nonetheless, you uh, a lot of people's faith in Atari as a platform, I think, was shaken. I and mean, it was still relatively new. Um, the trust that parents had in Atari, that they would produce fun games to buy their kids for their birthday or Christmas, uh, probably shaken. Uh, so all around, just not a good scene. Uh, but the, you know, the position that this game has in history is probably a big part of why people would collect it today. Uh, it's a great conversation piece. There's such a you know there's such a history behind this game, even if it's infamous. Uh, and my understanding is that the uh, copies that are being put up for auction are very early. Uh, I, I know they printed a gazillion of these, and these are, uh, as I understand it, earlier prints of the game. When people collect these. Uh, sealed games or invest in them. <laughs> there seems to be a settled science here that the value of these games uh, is impacted by how early in the print run for a game that this game was um, manufactured. Uh, so you'll see in some cases games like when we have the Super Mario Brothers games come up for the Nintendo, uh, some will be super expensive, some will be not so expensive, and a lot of it comes down to, again, with you know using Super Mario Brothers for the NES as an example, uh, there were like 12 different print runs of that cartridge. Um, so the most desirable would be the first uh, print run of the game, which was relatively small, and then all the subsequent ones... Uh, become a little bit less and less desirable, and mostly it's because there were just so many millions of them printed. Um, so there's there, there's that whole thing when you get in again when you get into sealed game collecting, it becomes less and less about the love of the game, and more about it being an investment vehicle and bragging rights as to how exclusive something is. There, there's despite what some will tell you, there's no way to know with certainty how many unopened copies of a game exist in the world. You can certainly take as a metric, and many people do, the number of examples of a game that were sent to a company to be, you know, graded and entombed in plastic for safekeeping. And that's, and you know, that there's nothing wrong with that from my perspective, particularly if you just want to preserve the condition of your game and you want to have something that looks really nice on a shelf. Yeah, absolutely. Um but ultimately, you know, most people, again, do this uh, for the sake of adding financial value to their game. So people look for the earlier prints. They look for uh, popular games that, that everyone loved uh, and tried to get into the, figuring out, you know, what, um, what print runs of a game might be worth more than another, uh, some, things along those lines. Um, 
And so we'll we'll look at some of that today in this. Uh, again, it's a little you might some might argue this is a little bit off brand for reclaiming retro. I will disagree respectfully. Um, I think that again there are some aspects of video games that we may not like a lot, but they exist, and it would be kind of silly for us to just pretend they don't exist. Uh, so what I'm going to do is try and maybe again take more of a collector's perspective on this as opposed to uh, someone who is strictly in the business of buying and selling for profit. Uh, and I suspect that perhaps, again, we'll come across some really cool games that we may have forgotten about uh, that are kind of interesting. And perhaps we can kind of enjoy the exercise of figuring out, well, what the heck do people see in this game uh, that they're willing to pay uh, perhaps thousands of dollars for a copy of it? Uh, who knows? But we will see. Uh, this auction is supposedly going to start momentarily. Uh, I've seen sometimes with these heritage auctions, they uh, they have delays. They have technical delays. So hopefully uh, oh, we will begin the auction as soon as possible. Thank you for your patience. Well, there you go. So there's that. Uh, while we're waiting, I'm going to take a brief um, moment to take a sip of my beverage here. <clears throat> Ah, that's a good beverage. <laughs> okay. Uh, there you go. There's an inside joke. Um, I'll remind everyone, Reclaiming Retro is a newish <clears throat> channel uh, that celebrates all aspects of retro gaming. We just dropped a video uh, last night uh, with my uh, my opinion on the age-old question of how do you properly clean your Nintendo cartridges, uh, and I would say you don't blow on them. And I go through and walk through exactly how we clean them out, <clears throat> at least how I clean them out. Uh, from the from the camera angle of someone who's been collecting games forever. Um, so there's that. There's a lot of good content coming down the line very soon on Reclaiming Retro. So if this is your bag, uh, please do consider subscribing. Uh, I don't think you'll uh, I don't think you'll regret it one bit. We do live stream on Wednesday nights at 8 p.m. Eastern time as well on a regular basis. This is sort of an uh, out of band uh, surprise experimental stream we're just really trying to <clears throat> see if this is uh interesting and or compelling content uh and we'll see if uh, if folks get engaged and come hang out maybe we'll do this again if not that's okay too uh we gave it a go uh so here i am vamping because of course heritage auctions has apparently not plugged in their router or they have to restart it uh perhaps reboot windows uh if i if i was the tech support for heritage auctions, it would go something like this. So we'd have panicked heritage auction person saying, ah, the auction doesn't start what to do, what to do. And I'd be like, <clears throat> okay, hold on, stay calm. Uh, I'm going to want you to go ahead and I'm going to want you to restart your computer. I'm like, no, 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 the auction is supposed to be now. We can't, we can't do that. Like, uh, sir, uh, I need you to restart your computer. And then, of course, you know, eventually what will happen is you just lie and say you did and it still doesn't work. Uh, and then the tech support conversation usually goes along the lines of, okay, well, um, all right, so the next thing we're going to do, uh, do you have your Windows disks? And I, and I, I don't have a disk drive. It's not 1994. <laughs> it came with the machine. Oh, okay, so, sir, you're going to take your, your – find the disk, disk 1, and I need you to put it in, and we're going to reinstall Windows. <laughs> usually that's where I just throw my phone across the room and uh, consult Google. Uh, but anyway, that's probably what's happening at Heritage Auction headquarters right now. Someone is being advised that they should reinstall Windows, I suspect, right about now, being 10 minutes behind uh, in a highly technical environment. I, that would be my wager if we, were, if, we were, uh, if we were gambling on this. And I strongly recommend that no one ever gamble. Uh, it's not a good thing to do. Uh, but what do you do? Your Heritage Auction... You're trying to uh, you're trying to get your stuff going. Uh, let's see, I have some incoming communiques. Uh, oh yes, okay, that's good. Uh, my producer Cassandra Hammerstone uh, is. Oh, here we go. Hold on, we'll come back to that. I was gonna say there were highlights, but we have an auction. Look at this. We have a live auctioner, auctioneer, auction person. Uh, oh, there you go, and she has a voice. Very polite. Uh, she is, she has the, she has a whole stage with a podium. It's almost like she's doing a press conference. Um, 
This is this is imag- exactly how I imagine it would look if Godzilla emerged in eight a city and the United Nations was doing a worldwide press conference. It would look just like this. Uh, but uh, instead of uh, Godzilla eating a city, oh, there's an un- there's an, an undescribed arm waving. Uh, she is going to uh, give us the ground rules. Now, uh, you'll notice I have not signed in because the last thing I want to do is accidentally misclick a button and buy a copy of Pac-Man for $64,000. So that will not be happening. Um, I do have friends that, that are avid collectors and participants in these who I imagine will probably be throwing a bit or two on this, and I certainly uh, uh, wish them the best of luck. Uh, in today's proceedings. So like I said, we have um, uh, Atari's Pac-Man, two copies uh, opening up. The first one, I believe both of them actually, have been bid up uh, to $875 already before the live auction. So with these auctions, you can actually put in a bid prior to the live event, uh, and that ends up being the starting bid for the actual live auction, at which point uh, folks, I guess, that are in the facility there and also over the internets can bid against one another. Uh, and the rest, as they say, will be history. So here we are, uh, Pac-Man. Uh, so this is apparently a this is an unopened copy of Pac-Man. Uh, the grading company, WADA, you'll see them a lot in these. Whoop, excuse me. Uh, and WADA... Uh, grades games that you send them on a 0 to 10 point scale. So this has been graded a 9.4, which kind of tells me that it is one of the nicer copies that you would find of this game unopened. Uh, So again, like I said, you know, probably collectible to folks that enjoy Pac-Man. And who doesn't enjoy Pac-Man? Folks who are astute and students of video gaming history know this game's unique position uh, in the history of Atari and, uh, in a greater sense, the fortunes of the early uh, video game industry. Uh, So while a a terrible game uh, uh, in terms of the playability, uh, a very important one. So not sure what's going on here. Oh, there's some weather in Dallas today. Uh, I won't say everything I was going to prepare because I don't want to hold us up any longer, but uh, I just wanted to thank you for... Apparently their equipment is all being staged outside in the parking lot. And to give us <laughs> Dallas weather perhaps it rained in the router. <laughs> I'm just trying to make sense of this here. These are all games this woman has never heard of prior to today. I promise you that. Uh, okay, so she's the hype man, just hyping up what's going on and reminding everyone that they're doing their best to reinstall Windows and cut them a break. Oh, we are going to start. All right, so we have the Pac-Man here. They were all orange, so I'm not sure why that was a distinct uh, a distinction to be made there. So you'll see that bids will start coming in, I believe. Assuming that someone else is interested in bidding more than $875 on this game. I don't know if that's a uh, something you can take to the proverbial bank here. Oh. So how does internet? Does anyone here uh, from the Dallas area? Can someone help me understand uh, how does the internet work in Dallas? Do they all use three hundred baud modems? Uh, <laughs> I'm just picturing weather and internet issues. Oh, she's left the podium in another five to ten minutes. Well, all righty then. <laughs> There is a okay, so there is a tornado warning in Dallas right now. Thank you, uh, Tornado the Twixter. Thank you for joining us, by the way. So, uh, all right. I mean, I guess that is what it is, right? So here's what we'll do. 
uh, while we wait, let me go back to the uh, let me go back to the Atari. Uh, I mean, let's play a little Atari Pac-Man. Actually, you know what I want to do? Hold on, I'm going to take that back. So we looked at the Pac-Man. The Pac-Man was obviously, like I said, not exactly the greatest. Here's what's interesting: um, the homebrew scene, the independent uh, developers over the years and over the decades have come up with just absolute amazing uh, techniques and in programming tricks to get so much more out of the Atari hardware than anyone ever thought was imaginable. And so someone made a uh, their own homebrew of Pac-Man called Pac-Man 8K. I'm going to see if I can load it up here. I believe it'll come up. Here we go. This is back in 2005. Uh, and so, and there was there was a number of different improvements on Pac-Man, but here was just one example. So here they had the music right corrected, the colors of the ghosts are more defined, uh, the animation of Pac-Man is now in all four directions, uh, the black background that you would expect is there, the siren music behind Pac-Man. So someone took the original code to the Pac-Man and reworked it and see instead of instead of a, like a regular vitamin pill in the middle you actually have the cherry look at that and you've got the little point amounts uh, so while not perfect this is an example of um, someone really improving the original Atari Pac-Man so let's see if we can't at least get through one of the screens here I'm kind of curious. I, I actually haven't played this before, but I'm very curious to see if they did like the little intermission st stage between the second and the third screen or whatever whatever other improvements they may have made. Uh, so like I said, tip of the hat, this just kind of goes to show how smart the independent Atari developer community is. Uh, really, really, and, and when you think about it, this probably represents what could have been if the, if Atari gave the developer even another an extra month to work on this before rushing it out for the holiday season. It could well have been this or better. Uh, and so when you look at this, it's almost a commentary on what happens when you just rush software to market. Yes, you know, instead of a vitamin, that's a relatively competent strawberry um i don't know how long it took the homebrew person to do this uh they certainly didn't have annotated source code to the game they had to reverse engineer it all by themselves oh wow they actually do have the intermissions here again it's a little choppy <laughs> and i don't know if this is the emulator or just that's how it works but i applaud the effort and again, it's, it stands to me, stands to reason to me that this is a commentary on when you rush software to market. Because um, surely if the original developer who has the annotated source code that they wrote had more time to work on it, they may very well have been able to uh, work this magic back in 1981. Uh, and I imagine that if this was released uh, to market, the fortunes for Atari may have been dramatically different um, because many of the criticisms uh, from the original release would not have been criticisms. Uh, perhaps the dots being more of slashes might rub people the wrong way. The shape of the maze isn't really particularly um, faithful to the arcade version, but graphically... It's definitely a step forward uh, from what was released originally. So it is kind of interesting to see uh, something like this. Oh, wow. And now our update from two minutes ago. Now they're pushing the auction out 15 to 20 minutes. So what what's happening right now is <laughs> they have um, they, they are three out of 27 floppy disks into reinstalling Windows at Heritage Auctions. Uh, and at some point, they're going to realize they should not have done that. 
Uh, I kid, but I kid, you know, in, coming from a place of uh, experience, having been in situations where I've received uh, ridiculous advice on what to do uh, during a technology crisis. But what we do here at Reclaiming Retro is we reclaim the fun. And we put the fun in, oh, my God, this is not fun. <laughs> Who I, I wonder if any of the other auction streamers are choosing to just freestyle and wax nostalgic and play Atari games. Probably not. They're probably talking about the current price of Bitcoin or Dogecoin or uh, the uh, wall, uh, <laughs> the the Dow Jones Industrial Index. But here we truly care about the games, and if uh, we can't get an auction, we'll get some gaming in. Uh, there you go. I'm going to check the chat in a minute. I can't really look at chat while I'm playing this. It takes up the whole screen. So after we get the, after this Pac-Man has been uh, defeated, I'll rejoin the, the chat. Uh, please feel free to jump in and say hello if you're lurking in the background. Ah, oh, there we go. That was a no-no. All right. So there you go. <laughs> Uh, so yeah, there was a tornado update. I hope everyone is safe. I certainly don't mean to, uh, I certainly don't mean to make light of a dangerous situation. I, I absolutely hope that, uh, that, uh, no one is harmed in the tornado and it is just a more, nothing more than a nuisance, uh, situation. What, what are some of the other, uh, do we, do I need to take a quick break here? Are we good? Okay. Uh, what are some of the other interesting Atari games while we're waiting? Oh, you know what? Um, uh, Qbert was an interesting... The, the port of Qbert to the Atari 2600 was interesting. I wouldn't mind checking that out real quick while we're waiting. Actually, I might play some NES. So here's the uh, here's the Atari 2600 port of Qbert. Um, and the problem is with most ports of Qbert... The controls can be wonky and frustrating. <laughs> so here we have Coily the Snake. And I'm going to hope that I press the right direction. Yes, I did. Okay. All in all, for... If you, if you put aside the funky controls that can be maddening... Uh, it's not a bad port of Qbert. The, 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 oh, well, well, there we go. We got squished. Um, the sound effects, a little, little, eh. Not sure if I'm a huge fan, but again, it's Atari for good. Oh, uh, well, there we go. I think that's it for me, right? Oh, no, I got one more try. Oh, can I get... Ah, oh, we got the... Oh, I might be in trouble here. There we go. Okay, we got it. Uh, let's see if we could do one more level. I think the other types of enemies come up now too, right? Do they have them in this game? I, I don't even remember if they like the weird purple enemies show up here. I guess we'll find out momentarily. Now you gotta jump. There we go. Uh, you know, I will say I didn't have on my impromptu uh, production sheet. What to do if they just don't do an auction. <laughs> but you know what? That's what I love so much about live TV. Uh, I consider this TV. Um, you always have to go into it thinking if everything completely goes to shit, what do we do? And today, a little Atari 2600 Qbert fits the bill well. I'm actually surprised I've gotten this far. Uh, oh, here's the part where you now have to change the color of the discs not once but twice oh uh -uh, i wasted my disc he's not going to jump off that thing oh oh there's the guy that kind of screws you over oh boy can we get this thing there we go now you see you can actually touch the snake <laughs> uh, <laughs> oh 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 he temporarily oh boy uh we're in trouble here we're doing a little dance with the snake here. Oh, look at that. Look at that. Oh, I'm screwed. Yeah, all right. <laughs> well, there you go. 17,000 points. Uh, so there you go. 
Uh, let's see what else uh, was up. Well, yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna pivot to the uh, NES library here. Uh, what were some of the fun games for NES that we can take a look at while we wait for uh, here to auctions to uh, I don't know recreate their infrastructure. <laughs> Um, let's see. What do we have here? What's interesting? Uh, Balloon Fight. Uh, Balloon Fight was one of my favorite games. It, uh, had, it certainly borrowed heavily from the Williams classic Joust. Um, you'll see here. I'm just going to make sure. Okay, I've got the controls right. Uh, so like Joust, what you need to do is get on top of your opponents and pop their balloons. Uh, without running into the side or bottom of the protagonists, uh, lest you lose uh, balloons and eventually get killed. It's a, it's a simple mechanic. Again, admittedly, uh, I think most people, if they're being honest, realize that this is a complete ripoff of Joust. Oh, see, I've lost a balloon because he, uh, I guess he pecked me. I think that's, that's okay. That's in bounds to say he pecked me. I mean, it's accurately what happened here. Um, they are vulnerable when they don't have a balloon. But so it's basically Joust. Uh, but again, a fun game. Very simple gameplay. Very addictive. Oh, and these clouds, if you dilly-dally too much, uh, lightning will come out. So not unlike uh, the good folks of Dallas, uh, I am also at the mercy of some inclement weather here. So perhaps this is definitely a timely game to play while we wait for the heritage auction. There we go. Uh, I welcome in anyone that's uh, that was going to one of the other live streams for this. Uh, and uh, we're looking for some video game, strictly video game play. Uh, you are welcome to stop by, hang out, uh, shoot the breeze as they were um, as we wait for the auction. Uh, again, this is Reclaiming Retro. We love retro games. Uh, no channel on the internet has ever really, uh, uh, this is such a new idea, a YouTube channel about retro video games. I, I know it's innovative. Uh, we are breaking new ground here, so your subscription is appreciated. You're getting in on the ground floor, folks. You're getting in on the ground floor, uh, celebrating retro video games. We're going to talk about, there's a game called Super Mario Brothers. It's super popular and fun. We're going to talk a lot about that. No, I'm just kidding. We're going to talk about retro games, but uh, we're going to try and focus on things that you may not see everywhere else. So we have an update here. We have an update from Heritage. Let's see. Uh, we will be starting the auction shortly. Oh, here's the bonus round. We'll do the bonus round for Balloon Fight, and then we'll get back to the auction. So this is cool. This is fun. The uh, the uh, As you can probably see here, it requires no explanation. I need to float around and catch as many of the balloons as I possibly can. It's probably not likely that, yeah, I'm gonna miss at least one or two, uh, but you get as many as you can for bonus points. If you do get them all, you get a whole bunch of bonus points, but unfortunately we're not gonna get that. I think we only missed one though. Yeah, we only missed one. All right. So there you go. Let's, let's go back to the auction here, lest we miss any of the excitement. Uh, the, okay, I am told that the tornado warning will be expiring at some point, not too distant future, in Dallas time. Uh, and it looks like they are returning to the sale. Now, I'm a little confused because, oh, do I have to hit play here? Oh, there we go. Oh, they appear to have changed the, the stage. They, they have, they have. Uh, perhaps um, <laughs> go on to some undisclosed location <laughs> with internet. They're they're actually at a Starbucks right now. <laughs> well, they took a green screen to Starbucks. <laughs> like, let's sell some video games. Please familiarize yourself with all of our terms in the catalog and on our website. Heritage has been compiling bids from our worldwide audience over the past few weeks, and John, my right, is our book attendant. Oh, boy. All sorts of disclaimers. Everyone, please be on your best behavior. Please remember to tip your servers. They do work for gratuities. And as always, bid responsibly. Who are we kidding? 
bid irresponsibly. That's more money for us. I'm going to actually see if I can get the... I'm going to put the first game that we're going to do for the Nintendo up on the screen so that we can uh, check it out while it's being auctioned. 1942 will be the first NES game. Uh, let me see if I can see the chat. I can't, but okay. <laughs> um... I do need to do I do make a little bit of a switcheroo here. Hold on. We're just we're doing a little adjustment here live. Forgive me. I'm gonna put the chat. I know you're gonna be able to see it on the screen. I realize that, but well, actually not too bad. Just putting the chat. You'll see a little bit of it, but forgive me. It's just so that I can actually see it. Uh, all right. Let's go back and put the game on the screen. There we go. Okay, so did she do a costume change too? I don't remember. Was she wearing that uh, the uh, the uh, uh, I don't remember the uh, the the witch from Harry Potter <laughs> cosplay? <laughs> that was she. Okay, all right, my bad. This is longer than the ring announcements before a boxing match. Okay, now we got, uh, here's the uh, the State Athletic Commission from Texas is here. Oh, here we go. There we go. All right, 33 minutes in. And look at that. Bids are flowing. People want to buy this Pac-Man for the Atari 2600. They got about $1,200. And here's the thing, too. Um, when uh, you see these bids, like 1600 for example, that's not what the winner of the auction is going to pay. They're actually going to pay considerably more. Uh, what that amount does not factor in is there is, I believe, a, either a 10 or 20%. Um, I believe it is a 20% buyer's premium that is being paid. It's some percent. I forget the exact number. But in this case, uh, the next bid is 1900 and that person would end up paying $2,280 with the premium that the auction house charges for their services here. So, wow, I'm, I'm kind of surprised that... Uh, this particular game uh, has this much uh, is is perceived as having this much value. I know that you're certainly not going to see too many examples of this game unopened. Uh, but having said that, on the other side of the coin, they made millions of copies of them. Uh, so what this tells me is that there is enough people that exist out there that are motivated and interested in not just having a copy on the shelf but a sealed one. That they've paid uh, two thousand four hundred, which is really two thousand eight hundred eighty dollars. Um, now this version uh, appears to be another variant of the artwork on the front. You see, the Pac-Man is kind of like off in the middle of the front, whereas the first one had Pac-Man at the top of the box. This is another thing about people that collect Atari. Forget, forget the money part of it. Uh, one of the things that Sometimes you'll see Atari people go crazy because there are so many different variants of the boxes of Atari games that exist. Uh, Cassandra Hammerstone really just got the, the, the master's education in this uh, from being in my company um, over the last couple of years and watching as I was working on building my collection uh, and seeing firsthand that for any given game, there might be a dozen different variations of the artwork, the box type. Uh, and so you get into a collector saying, well, I could have Pac-Man in my collection. But what if I'm also uh, a sufferer of OCD? Like, I would feel weird if a friend came over and I only had nine versions of Pac-Man instead of 12. And I think that's what drives some of this. So now we're in the NES world here. So here's 1942. Uh, this is a top-down shooter. I'll, I'll fire up a game just for demonstration purposes. So this is the game that's being auctioned. 
It's a sealed copy in really good shape. All that beeping is probably going to be a bit annoying, but <laughs> no one wanted to hear the auctioner anyway, right? <laughs> so people are paying thousands. This is the game that we're watching being auctioned right now. It's not a bad game. It's a simple game. It was one of the earlier titles for the system. Uh, and as you can see, this is what this is what people are paying four thousand dollars for. Oh, there's a power up you can get, which is kind of cool. All right, there we go. Let's let's uh, find out. so that was, that was that. Uh, four grand, and now we have Adventure Island. Uh, I don't know if we're gonna do this for every game. Let's see how interesting or annoying it it comes across as. So this was a classic game. Uh, where you would walk around and jump around. Fun game. The gameplay is good. I always played this game too conservatively myself. Two thousand six hundred dollars. Uh, someone is willing to pay for a sealed copy of this game. Three thousand after the fees so again a very ah apparently i can't get uh, that high up there there oh we got a skateboard so like i said this is one of the better nes games for my money uh the gameplay is fun there's different elements to it uh and it's still going the auction is still going so three thousand dollars plus on Adventure Island. Ah, I have to choose between the game audio and the auction audio. What we are going to do is we're going to take the auction audio out uh, because it's, it is kind of conflicting with everything. So that was the uh, Hudson's Adventure Island. Now, there are actually three uh, Hudson's Adventure Island games. Was there actually four? Actually, that's not true. There were four uh, Adventure Island games in this series. So this is the second uh, game in the series. Uh, it, too, is a very highly graded sealed copy of this. Uh, and it, too, as you can see, uh, is definitely commanding a pretty penny, as it were. Oh, I lost my chat. Oh, I hit it. I hit it behind my <laughs> screen. Oh, curses. That's never a good thing. Um, I don't know. I don't know how much I love playing each and every uh, game here. We might, we might not strictly do that for everything here. Uh, but as you can see, so Adventure Island 2, uh, it is uh, commanded by, I guess it's going to command 2000 bucks or so. Uh, this is, by the way, what Adventure Island 2 looks like. So it's a similar... Uh, uh, similar in that uh, the gameplay is similar, but you have to like, select stages first. So there's kind of more of a story involved. Uh, but ultimately, the gameplay is similar. A little, a little more refined than what you what you do and how it's presented, but in its core, it is still Adventure Island. Uh, definitely improvements graphically. So there we go. Up next is Arch Rivals, uh, a basket brawl game, as they say. Uh, this was a fun original uh, basketball game. Uh, I applaud the the uh, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? I applaud the ingenuity. This was a case where instead of going and spending a fortune doing licenses on NBA players, uh, they created their own cartoony game. It's really fun. Uh, One thousand dollars it looks like is what you'll be paying. Actually, let's see again after fees. Uh, more like fourteen, fifteen hundred dollars uh, to get a sealed copy of this cartridge. Uh, so again, you know that seems to be, I guess, in the Nintendo Entertainment System world. Uh, I think I think there's kind of a, a baseline where across the board, if you want a copy of a game that is still in the seal, that it's gone through the whole grading process, and it's a, uh, uh, we'll say, a good condition, maybe a nine or above. Uh, at this point in the game, you're looking to spend at least a thousand bucks. Pretty much, no matter what the game is. Now, look at this. 
Holy Toledo oh, baseball. NES baseball. This was one of the first games that came out for the NES. It's just a baseball game. Thirty-one, thirty-four thousand dollars, thirty-six thousand. So why, why you may ask, is this happening? So this is a sealed original Nintendo game, one of the first ones that came out. They call them the black box games because of the art style. Uh, these are incredibly desirable for hardcore collectors that like want to have on display the original NES deck and the original eight or nine games that came out. You got to have this one. So even though it's not a like a, it's a good functional baseball game. There's nothing particularly great about it. It's baseball. Uh, but again, like I said, uh, this is a case of, uh, you know, it's it's collecting all the games with this original art style. And but I'm blown away. Granted, it's factory sealed. It's an earlier production run, and it's it's highly graded. But forty six thousand dollars for NES baseball. Uh, honestly, I don't. I don't know what I can say here. That's just that's insane to me. I don't think I have that particular game loaded up in the emulator uh, for demonstration. But suffice to say, it's just a baseball game. There's absolutely nothing special about it besides the fact that it's a first party Nintendo game. Uh, so wow, uh, that just I, I don't even know what else to, to react on. I mean, I certainly wish I had a sealed copy. I have a complete in box copy, uh, but it doesn't have that all important shrink wrap that <laughs> changes the value by about fifty thousand dollars. Apparently, uh, there you have it. Baseball stars, not a Nintendo game. SNK, so it's a third party licensed game. Again, no no Major League Baseball players, but a very good execution, a good, solid, serviceable baseball game. Uh, not a bad word I can say about it. Uh, and it looks like it, too, is in the thousands. It's about 6,000. Uh, again, I think with being like a special auction, they reserve the, like the most highly graded games for this one. So most of these you'll see are like a 9 or above. Uh, in terms of their grade. I think that has an awful lot to do with what people are willing to pay for it as well. Like, if you're obscenely wealthy and you're collecting these things, you've got to have something that makes you feel special. So it's like the grade, uh, it's it's how few of them there are out there, so on and so forth. So that one went for $7,200. Uh, here's the original Batman game. There was a couple of different Batman games uh, for the NES, I believe there was like three or four, actually. Uh, this was the first one that came out. Uh, it's pretty iconic. Uh, it is a great game. It's not just a movie license. It's a great game. Uh, and here's the thing that's interesting, right? You would think that with comic book collectors and how, you know, beloved comic book lore and stuff is, that Batman would have, like, been worth a fortune, right? The first one, it's factory sealed. And yet it's struggling, it, struggling, which is a ridiculous thing for me to say, struggling at just $2,000, whereas the the baseball the uh, was like, what, 50, 60 grand. So it, it's like, it's such a, it's, it's an interesting market. Uh, again, I'm not in this market. I'm never going to be spending, no matter how wealthy I am, never spending 60 grand on a video game. Hey, Vince, good to see you, my friend. Uh, yeah, money I blew by opening video games as a kid. Wow, yeah. Thank you for mentioning that. That's a great segue. Um, I think one of the other things that when we sit and watch it again, like I said, I'm not in this market. I don't care if I win the billion and a half Powerball, right? If I win that, I might start my own game company. I might invest in content creators, but I'm never going to pay 60 grand for a piece of plastic. <laughs> so I don't relate to it, but, um... When we, as people who aren't in that market, think back about a lot of these games, I I don't remember if I had baseball, but I might have. It's entirely possible I had a factory-sealed copy of baseball sitting in my little 10-year-old mitts, and I, yeah, there's no way that 10-year-old me or 12-year-old me is looking down at this thing and, oh, I can't open it. <laughs> no. I probably opened that thing in record time. Um, and so, Vince, we're all in the same boat as we watch these. We think about a lot of people had Battletoads this game, right? Uh, five grand. 
five grand for this uh, because of the fact that it has the shrink wrap on it. Like I know I have a copy of Altoids in the box, and I know that maybe it's worth two, three hundred bucks. Uh, but ultimately, when you think about it, if if you look at it from our perspective, these crazy rich people are paying thousands of dollars to brag about their cellophane. <laughs> I mean, and if you're if you're a passionate sealed video game devotee, I'm so sorry if you're butt hurt. This might not be the channel for you. I'll be honest, but let's be, but, but let's call a spade a spade here. <laughs> you're paying thousands of dollars for some cellophane. <laughs> That's what you're doing. I mean, you can try and rationalize it any way you'd like. Now, Blades of Steel, this was a great game, a truly marvelous game. Uh, I will, I will probably annoy people when I say, I believe it is the best hockey game on the NES, uh, superior to Nintendo Ice Hockey. Um, what better way to uh, spend time with a friend uh, uh, and uh, enjoy uh, some Blades of Steel? Uh, great, great game. Even if you're playing it solo against computer, it's a lot of fun. Uh, and obviously someone wants uh, a copy for their shelf that they'll never open, and they spent ten grand on it, so there you go. Um now, Castlevania, uh, again, this is probably one of the top 10 in terms of the best games, in terms of great playability, great uh, value if you're actually going to open the game up and put it in a machine. And that one, surprisingly, stalling at $10,000. And, and, again, I'm, I'm half joking on all these, right? Because, um, again, I would never in a million years pay anywhere near this for these games, but... Um, relative to, again, like I said, the sixty fifty thousand dollars baseball, I'm surprised that a game that's so iconic and beloved like Castlevania doesn't quite bring the same money. Uh, but again, you know, I'm not an investment analyst, so I guess maybe I'm not super qualified on that. And apparently here's another copy of Castlevania as well. Um, you know, and here, and let me make an important point here. Actually, let me, let me uh, take a sip of my beverage, as they say. Uh, and then I've got a point I'd like to make here. There we go. Please don't misconstrue my commentary or some of the snark here is me uh, poo-pooing video game collecting. Couldn't be any further from the truth. Uh, I mean, as you can see behind me, <laughs> our new our new set that we built, you know, I have a vast collection of boxed video games, Nintendo and Atari. Uh, and I deeply enjoy the thrill of the hunt, looking around and finding these games. Uh, but each and every one of those games on that shelf behind me, I have and will from time to time take off the shelf, gently open up, uh, retrieve the cartridge, pop it in my system and play them. Um, complete in box game collecting is pure, I think, because uh, it's, 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 it's genuine. That's probably the word I'm really looking for here. Uh, because it's people that love how great they display on a shelf. They're great conversation pieces, and you don't have to be scared of actually, you know, God forbid, playing the games as they were intended to be playing from time to time. Um, so both those Castlevanias and the five figures, by the way. Contra, another classic game, another one that would be in that top 10 NES games, and it looks like that's going to be around $12,000. Um Somebody apparently bid twelve thousand and one dollars. I didn't know you were allowed to do that. Somebody bid twelve thousand, and someone bid twelve thousand and one. Uh, that almost feels like dirty pull to me. But again, I'm not an auction expert, uh, so be it. Uh, next up, we got Cowboy Kid. So um, this is probably going to have interest, not as much based on the quality of the game, but the fact that it's a very rare game. So a lot of these NES titles particularly the ones that happened later in the NES life cycle, like when Super Nintendo had emerged and there was still some point in time for a year, year and a half, where Nintendo still had games coming out for the NES just because the install base was so huge, you couldn't just abandon it, right? Uh, so Cowboy Kid was a later game, but those later games had much smaller print runs uh, than the games that came out before Super Nintendo was a thing. So... Um, for that reason alone, a lot of these games are very difficult to find, regardless of whether they're in the box or regardless of whether they're sealed. 
And in that case, that was interesting. That sold for about 3000 after uh, the fees. And so that also tells us that it's not just the uh, physical rarity of something that drives the price. It's the desirability uh, of the title itself. Um, I would suggest that price aside, if you were just looking to find a sealed copy of Castlevania, you'd have an easier time finding that than Cowboy Kid, but yet the values are are not strictly uh, beholden to the actual difficulty you'd find in procuring the copy. Uh, Disney's DuckTales. Uh, a lot of people love this game. I, I never really got into it. I'll be completely honest. Uh, but to each their own. Uh <laughs> Uh, and nonetheless, it seems, and, and I, again, I'm surprised that this doesn't have one of those huge inflated va uh, values because it's Disney. Uh, I think people, there's so many Disney collectors out there, so it's interesting. Uh, but it is settling at just $4,500. Uh, here's Donkey Kong 3. So this is another one of those black box games, the original uh, games released by Nintendo. Uh, and sure enough, you see, like I said before, uh, people are going completely insane for the original games. This is up to $16,000 now. Uh, so, and I guess it is a later production run, but nonetheless, just being in that category seems to yield a five-figure valuation at this point. Um, Donkey Kong 3, underappreciated sequel to Donkey Kong Jr. Uh, it The gameplay involved um, basically violating Donkey Kong uh, in the... Uh, I mean, look, I'm just going to be clinical because I don't know how you make you sugarcoat this. Uh, you violate Donkey Kong's anus with pesticide. That's literally the game. And that's the objective. You are Stanley a character who I believe doesn't exist anywhere else in the Nintendo canon outside of this game, perhaps because Nintendo didn't want to have to acknowledge they had a character whose prime existence was about violating animals in the rectal region with dangerous chemicals. But that's Donkey Kong 3. And someone out there uh, is an enthusiast of violating animals with chemicals and is willing to pay $30,000 for a visual avatar of that activity. So to you, if you're out there and you are the Donkey Kong 3 fan, uh, I say uh, good on you for earning $30,000 to spend on this luxury item. Uh, and, oh, there's another copy. There's two copies of Donkey Kong 3. Look at that. So if there are multiple people who are obscenely rich, uh, a gorilla anus torture enthusiasts, you have a second chance. You have a second chance here to get your, oh, look at this one, this one sold for just, no, oh, it's, it's almost going to sell for uh, just over 10,000. If you're the one that bought the $30,000 uh, gorilla, gorilla anus torture device, you're probably steaming right now that someone snuck in behind you, snuck in behind you, and backdoored a much cheaper copy. <laughs> My Nelson from The Simpsons voice. Uh, so sorry to whoever whoever uh, got the the rare end of that one, as they say. That deal. Uh, I, I my 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 thought my thoughts and prayers are with you on that one. I wish if I'd known we had two of them, I would have fired up and played a little. Uh, Donkey Kong Junior is next. Uh, that is the true sequel to Donkey Kong. Of course, where the tales have turned, and uh, Donkey Kong is no longer the villain, but is now the victim, having been um, unfairly uh, uh, kidnapped uh, by Mario, uh, and apparently he has not been treated humanely, so the son of Donkey Kong is now going to free Papa. Now, interestingly, this is a black box game, and it, and again, I, I guess I just don't understand the market. This one is struggling to get past thirty five hundred. So, uh, couldn't tell you why some are way more expensive than others. Uh, it's a mystery to me, but uh, 
I guess there are not a lot of animal activists in the in the Venn diagram of uh, video game investors and animal activists. Those two ovals just do not overlap. I think that's what's going on here. So uh, 5700 a mere 6 k to purchase your own sealed Donkey Kong Jr. game. Uh, a bargain at twice the price. <laughs> Perhaps perhaps one of the Donkey Kong 3 enthusiasts should jump in so that they can have two of the three, the Donkey Kong trilogy, uh, right there on their mantle uh, next to each other. See, now I'm trying to sell them on it. Uh, I get no compensation from Heritage Auctions, by the way, in any way, shape, or form for this. I imagine they're probably not a fan of me coming in and making uh, gorilla butt jokes. Uh, uh, as a background to their prestigious and very important auction. Um, <laughs> we will probably get copyright struck by Heritage Auctions at some point for this. Uh, Double Dragon. Who doesn't know Double Dragon? I mean, everybody knows the game Double Dragon. I don't have to go and explain it. Uh, classic, classic, classic arcade game. Really good port. Uh, really good port on the NES, and it's already over $10,000. So there is definitely love for this particular title. Uh, out there. Uh, it looks like there's going to be two copies. There's actually two copies of Double Dragon. Now, let me see. I might have time to squeeze in this observation, see if I can scroll fast enough. I don't know if I can, but I will I'll give it my best shot here. Uh, in Double Dragon, if I can get there in time, we'll see. Here we go. Uh, what I always thought about the arcade game and the NES game, if you look here, you see on the screen... Oh, I, my controller stopped. Hold on. I don't know if I'm going to have time to pull this off. They're still they're still going, though. There we go. So look at this. The open cut scene. This guy punches this girl in the stomach and abducts her. Uh, very graphic, very violent, quite frankly, disturbing. Uh, and that was right there, that scene right there in the opening of the both the arcade game and the, and the Nintendo game. I could see the arcade game having that opening, actually, um, because it's an arcade. But Nintendo was all about making games that were uh, family-friendly. Uh, so I was actually super surprised that that was allowed to make it into the opener, the open cutscene of the home port. I would imagine it would just be that, you know, maybe they just grabbed her or... You know, he just walked away with her. But the fact that the whole thing where he just basically just straight up punches her in the stomach and grabs her uh, made it to the Nintendo Entertainment System. So it's an odd little anomaly um, or an interesting factoid or so. I think Double Dragon 2 has a similar uh, disturbing opening cut scene as well. I don't know. Does it? I, I'm trying to remember. Let me see if I can pull up Double this Double Dragon 2. Uh, oh, it's going to do all the... Okay, one player. No, okay, so that... There is no disturbing opening cutscene for Double Dragon 2. Okay, so perhaps between the making of 1 and 2, uh, they thought better <laughs> about uh, what they were doing there. Uh, so there you go. Double Dragon 2 looks like it's going to be sell uh, sold for about uh, a little under four grand after the fees. Now, here's Excitabike, another one of the black box games. Uh, absolutely beloved game. Again, anyone that had Nintendo, especially early on, has played Excitabike. I guarantee you that. Uh, what a great game. $24,000 uh, so far uh, being uh, bid on this game. Uh, like I said, if just the music is pretty iconic here, right? Uh... There we go. Who doesn't remember this game? There you go. And when you're off to the races, you obviously you move the little biker up and down. You want to avoid obstacles. If you put the gas on too much, you overheat. So you have to be careful about it. You can't just gun it. You'll blow the engine. Uh, but again, simple but really great gameplay. I'm going to be careful here to not... Again, oh, and you can fall off of your bike. Uh, but truly great game. Like, I would feel so terrible if I had a copy of Excitabike and I couldn't play it. 
uh, because I paid like, let's see, what, 40 grand for it? <laughs> but again, to each their own. I'm not here to hate. I'm here to commentate. Uh, someone paid 40 grand for that. Uh, Felix the Cat. Um, nothing particularly remarkable on the game. It was another example of a harder to find game uh, because it was one of the later uh, releases. Uh, let's see if I've got the info. Yeah, 1992 it came out. So, yeah, that was definitely uh, one of the last games. Uh, but it wasn't, I mean, Felix the Cat, I don't think, is that desirable of an intellectual property. Uh, the gameplay was somewhat unremarkable. So, it will sell for a mere $3,000. <laughs> a mere $3,000. Um, Final Fantasy. Now, here you go. I'm expecting this to be somewhat interesting. Of course, this is the very first Final Fantasy game. Of course, everyone, you know, especially younger folks today, know, like, what, they're up to Final Fantasy 18 or some silliness like that, some ridiculous number of uh, entries. Uh, but it was firstly an NES game. Uh, as you can see here, wow, it's just it went from 6,000 to 16,000 in seconds. Look at that. Uh, sixteen thousand dollars. Uh, someone is willing to pay for the original Final Fantasy. I'm actually surprised it hasn't gone higher. There is another bid. Um, again, I'm not in the investment game, but I would think in the eyes of an investor, this is the kind of game that probably matriculates in value considerably, uh, because the Final Fantasy series is never going to end. And you know, if you get to where there's thirty Final Fantasy games, having the very first one, I imagine, is probably becomes a big thing. So, uh, again, not an investor, not an advocate, but uh, I feel like even at, like, you know, 22 grand, I could see this being one of those, like, really crazy, like, six-figure games at some point. So, whoever bought it, uh, as insane as it is to say, you probably didn't do too bad there. Uh, put it in a vault and don't let anyone look at or touch it. <laughs> like, video games were meant to be. It's sealed in a bank vault forever. All right. We're at the one-hour mark for this uh, broadcast. I was originally planning on going and making this about an hour-long program, focusing on the NES stuff. We'll go a little longer because we're only at the Fs. <laughs> they are. It's a combination of they're spending a lot more time on each game than I had anticipated. And, of course, uh, they needed to... Uh, Find internet access. Nothing like a million dollar outfit being like, hey, it's showtime. And you guys got any internet access around there? That'd be cool. So, all right. We'll stick around uh, for a little bit longer here. Let me just take a look here. What do we got here? Okay. Uh, I'm trying to see. Uh, we got a few people watching this. We do. Okay. We do. <laughs> I don't know how many people are watching, but uh, uh, we have a few watching. So, there you go. Let's see if Cassandra Hammerstone can give me the Iggy on that. Okay, gotcha. Okay. <laughs> so we'll stick around maybe for another 15 or 20 minutes. Uh, and uh, if you're watching this on demand, uh, hopefully you enjoy my pithy commentary on video games. I'm, we're not going to stick around here for hundreds of them, um, but this was more of an exercise to kind of enjoy uh, uh, talking games and using the auction as the inspiration to remember some games. So we'll stick around for another 10, 15 minutes. Um, let's see. Gargoyles, gargoyles. Is it gargoyle or gargoyle? Gargoyle. Well, anyway, that quest two. <laughs> and I don't think there was a one. That's the weird part about this game. I don't believe there was a gargoyles quest one for the NES. Let me see if I can uh, get a definitive answer. Yeah, no, I'm pretty confident. It's strange. They're, they're, they, the first game, the Capcom game, started with two. I guess maybe that was an interesting uh, marketing idea. We'll never know what happened to Gargoyles Quest 1. But nonetheless, the second one was fairly popular, and it sold for about five grand uh, after fees. Ghosts and Goblins. Now, this is an interesting title. Uh, Capcom, this is heralded as arguably... One of the most difficult, if not the most difficult, uh, NES game. It is 
punishingly difficult uh, to the point of being cruel. Uh, and it's one of those things where it's so hard that it's compelling and it's built itself an audience just based off of that uh, that relationship it has with the players. Uh, there are folks that speed run this. There is an official world record. So there are folks that have played through this, and you have to actually play through it twice to get the quote-unquote good ending. Uh, but if you go on Twitch, there are folks that speed run this, and it's a, a thing to behold. Uh, never something I'd be able to do, but it is fascinating. Uh, Goonies 2, uh, a really good game. I don't know if it would crack my top 10, but I would say a really good game. Um, obviously based off of the beloved 80s movie, The Goonies. Uh, there was a Goonies 1. I don't believe it was released in the U.S. I believe it was a Famicom game, but the U.S. got the larger scale, more like RPG type uh, feel uh, to Goonies 2. Uh, it is difficult. Uh, some, of those pu- some, of the, it, some of the puzzles and the mazes are quite obnoxious. Uh, but with a walkthrough, you can enjoy it, uh, playing through the whole thing. Uh, like I said, it's it's not a bad game. Uh, it's probably worth a playthrough if you want to go back and revisit the classics on NES. I wouldn't get too into it, but it's probably worth a playthrough. And uh, to the investment community, it is apparently worth ten grand. <laughs> so there you go. We've got that. Uh, oh, there's a couple more of the black box games, by the way, coming up. Uh, so here we have Gumshoe, uh, and this is a mere 8.5. Now, this is interesting. You, what you might notice here is I what I've seen is some of the folks in this in, investment uh, game, uh, it's almost as if if the game is graded less than 9.0, it might as well have been a game that someone ran over with a car <laughs> in terms of what people will pay for it. It really is crazy when you think about it. And it's not as if it had been run over by a car, but just the slightest little dents in the box. You know, maybe the, there's a corner that's not super sharp, you know, or there might be a little little tiny, tiny tear on the seam on the shrink wrap. That's what gets it dinged down to the eights. And look at this, 2,300, 20, 28 after fees for a black box game. And I think I guarantee you it's all about that. Um Again, it's just so insane. It's just so insane. Like the person that you know would pay fifteen grand for this game with a with like one less little tiny ding on the side that you can't even see, you know, or a little tiny tiny scratch in the in the shrink wrap. I mean, I mean, who are you going to who are you going to impress? At whatever cocktail parties you're going to, I guess that's what I want to know. And ultimately, in, in at the risk of being a bit crude, but I'm just trying to be as real as I can. I think the question I would ask someone that has, you know, all the nine point whatever games and they paid a million dollars for them, I'd, I'd ask them point blank. I see that, I see that, you know, $30,000 gum show. Here's my question. How many times has this game gotten you laid? <laughs> How many people? laid eyes on that $30,000 piece of plastic and were so overcome with emotion that they just tore their clothes off in front of you. I would be willing to guess. The answer to that question is a big goose egg. So, it, so, so <laughs> what, <laughs> what's going, why couldn't you just get the $3,000 copy <laughs> and be done with it? I don't know. Again, Here's the thing. I'm not in this community. I'm st- I'm staring at it from outside, so I can't sit here and pass judgment. On uh, people are certainly in, in, especially in a an open, free capitalist market like we have here in the good old USA. People are free to spend their money any way they choose, uh, as long as it's not on drugs. <laughs> or 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 no, I mean you can't. Don't do it. Don't do it. You can't do that. Can't do that. And don't like buy children. Also, can't do that. I mean, anything that's legal to purchase, anything that's legal to purchase is on board. That's what I'm trying to say. All right. Anyhow, Ice Climber. <laughs> Ice Climber. Uh, again, it's only a 9.2, and it's only at about 8,000 bucks. A bargain. I'm, 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 I'm sad that I don't have my sign in button pressed. <laughs> 
<laughs> Ice Climber, by the way, was a pretty horrible game. I'll be honest with you. It was it was a real stinker uh, of a game. The controls were punishingly difficult. It just didn't have a fun factor to it. Uh, so there you go. Uh, Jackie Chan's Action Kung Fu. Uh, another game. Gameplay it left a lot to be desired. It had that Jackie Chan uh, license. Uh, who who, who made, printed uh, Hudson? The same folks that made the Adventure Island games. Um, not many people even know that it exists. So I'm a little bit unsurprised that it's not exactly setting the world on fire uh, in terms of uh, desirability here. Uh, as much as everyone loves Jackie Chan, it's like, again, I don't think many people know that this game ever came out. So it is what it is. I, I guess many people that are trying to get a complete set of NES games might be interested in this, uh, but that's going to be about it. Uh, now, after this game coming up, actually, we'll go. We're gonna go. I'll tell you what we're gonna do. We're gonna go to to the point where we do the Legend of Zelda games before we wrap things up, because I'm sure some of those will go for crazy money, uh, which is about six or seven games from now. Um, the Karate Kid. Now, this game is infamous uh, because it is one of the worst. NES games ever made. The gameplay is atrociously bad. Uh, you can you, you you just really can't play it and have fun. <laughs> uh, the artwork is great, and if you love the Karate Kid, that's cool. But as you can see here, uh, it's not going to go that far by virtue of the fact that the game is just universally considered a turd. Uh, and I think that the Karate Kid is maybe so far in the rear view mirror that there's not a lot of karate kid fans out there. Like, I don't know that people collect, I don't know that people collect karate kid memorabilia. I don't think people collect, what's his name? Ralph Macchio. And there's pictures of him today. That's the other problem. He didn't do anything after karate kid, right? Except get old. So if you really want to keep the royalties and your brand, you just can't be in public. Cause looking at 57 year old Ralph Macchio, it just ruins it for me. That's just my, I'm just, I'm editorializing here. Because Andrew Emerson looking up at me as I say things that I probably ought not say. <laughs> Kid Icarus, all-time classic, certainly a top 10 NES game. Uh, it is a silver box game. That in Metroid, uh, right on the heels of the black box games, those were silver box games. Uh, I'm really surprised that this has not broken the $10,000 mark. Um Really surprised at that. Uh, again, considering some of the other games that did sail over that mark, uh, it's certainly not for lack of being a good game. Uh, so there's that. Uh, so we'll see how that goes. Uh, I see a couple of black box kung fu games again coming up. Uh, and then there are some uh, multiple copies of The Legend of Zelda that will be coming up for auction that will probably wind down after uh, after uh, checking out here. So let's see. All right. Uh, <laughs> boy, it's like sometimes you get two people interested in a game and they'll wait to the last second to put their bid in, the next bid. Um, I guess that's some sort of, perhaps that's some sort of psychological tactic. Um, I find it a bit douchey, but <laughs> one person's psychological tactic, another, oh boy, that was probably the wrong adjective to use. I can, I can look up, I can see my producer over there and the degree to which she cringes and face palms gives me some real time feedback as to how colorful or not colorful, uh, my articulation of a given situation is. So, all right. Oh, she's got, she's got her head in her hands. She's reaching for the Advil. So, all right. Uh, how about this? That was that was a, that was an uh, uh, an unsportsmanlike thing to do. How's that? Okay, much better. Kid Clown, another very rare game, uh, decent game, very hard to find. Uh, but I think because the general public doesn't know it and love it, that's probably why it's not getting love. And maybe that now I know because Andrew Hamilton's going to cringe here. This might be fodder for my theory that you're buying these games to impress your friends, to show off at parties, right? And we're not going to get into the, the having having sexy time with anyone. We're done with that theory. We're done with that theory. But 
if you're trying to impress people at a party, breaking out the kid clown, everyone's going to be like, I don't know what that game is. I've never heard of it. But breaking out a minty fresh, like Super Mario, or even like one of the original Nintendo games, even baseball. Like, oh, yeah, I had that. Um, so that maybe that's part of this as well. And then it's more important that you're you're buying a game that you can show off uh, as opposed to its true rarity. That there's only a few hundred copies of it out there. But when you bring it, to, when you when you roll up with your uh, tuxedo and your top hat and your monocle, and you're carrying a copy of Kid Clown as your thing you want to show off, everyone's going to be like, "You look ridiculous." But if you show up with a copy of Super Mario Brothers. Uh, everyone wants to make out with you. I think that's what it is. See, I'm, 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 see, I'm, we're, we're de-escalating the intensity of the color there. Um, it, it's, it's, it, we're going to continue de-escalating until Cassandra Hammerstone doesn't cringe. Everyone's going to want to give you a hearty handshake and a pat on the back for how cool you are. <laughs> we started that theory with uh, a home run, and we've dialed it back to first base. There we go. I think that's reasonable here. All right. This is, by the way, this is not a children's show. This, Reclaiming Archer was about adults my age, uh, primarily enjoying, uh, you know, reclaiming their retro. So please don't let your children uh, watch Reclaiming Retro without without adult supervision, because we might get into things that are too real. <laughs> Kirby's Adventure. Speaking of too real, uh, completely real. Very realistic. Uh, everyone knows that Kirby's exist among us, and uh, they exist by uh, inhaling objects and exhaling them. Um, I mean, I was just uh, I was in Target, and there was a family of Kirby's uh, purchasing uh, Madame Musil and uh, socks. So there you go. Uh, Kirby's Adventure, uh, forty five hundred dollars approximately. Again, another another surprise because that is a pl- that is a series that most people are familiar with. So surprised that didn't get a lot of love. Now, here's the first of two Kung Fu's, uh, as they say. Uh, would multiple Kung Fu's be called Kung Fi? I don't know if that's the case. I don't think that's ever been spoken. No, Kung Fu's, probably more realistic there. Again, this one. Oh, it's, oh, here we go. This is, now this is not a sealed copy. If you're wondering why it's stuck at 2600, this is not a sealed copy. This is a complete box copy. It is missing the all important cellophane. That again, if you bring the cellophane to the cocktail party, you're going to get a hearty handshake, a pat on the back, and a go get them, boy. Uh, and here you show up at that cocktail party with a complete box. They're all going to look at you in disgust and they're going to say, GTFO, man. GTFO. You, they might actually also pepper spray you. So the person that's paying $4,200 probably didn't read the description. <laughs> probably didn't notice that, in fact, this is not a sealed copy. And uh, their street cred is going to plummet. Uh, they'll be referred to, as they say in the entertainment industry, as a money mark. Uh, for dropping, let's see, at this point, with fees, $6,600. Uh, I mean, I have a complete box copy of Kung Fu right behind me. Uh, so if anyone wants to, to send me five grand, I will I will come travel to you in the United States. Not outside the United States, but in the United States. I will deliver it to you personally and make a YouTube video on it for five grand. Uh, I'll shake your hand. Uh, I won't do anything other than shake your hand because I am in a long-term committed relationship. But I will shake your hand. I will hand you the cartridge, and I will tell you you make good financial decisions. That would be, that that's exactly how the exchange will work. And pretend pretend you're you out there. You say hi there. And I'm like hi. I'm Doug from Reclaiming Retro. Thanks for the five thousand dollars. Here's a complete box copy of Nintendo's Kung Fu. Now I'm going to shake your hand, and I'm going to tell you you make good financial decisions. Now, having said that, that is all I have decided to do with you in terms of interaction. I'm going to turn my back to you now and go back home with your $5,000. But you have the, the the benefit of having a complete box copy of Kung Fu, and you can tell your friends, I shook your hand and complimented your financial discipline. So there you go. That's my ad. See that? It's like I'm, I'm uh, putting that out there. Uh, I will put my Bitcoin address in the description below. (laughs) 
Kung Fu, the second copy, 65. This is a sealed copy, folks. This is, yes, CI. Uh, we're talking about an $8,000 copy now. It is a 9.6, so I fully expect, uh, I would expect it to get $10,000 or more uh, because the very responsible person in the previous auction paid just a little less than this uh, for the unsealed. So, I mean, that, that cellophane should add thousands of dollars of value to the cartridge, to be sure. And here it is. And now that's its that's its it's just value. It's over um, eleven thousand uh, dollars. Again, as God intended. There you go. It looks like that's where it's going to wind up. Uh, now, what we're going to be doing next? No, ten thousand plus fees. I'm so sorry. So thirteen point two grand. Um, four copies of the Legend of Zelda are about to be uh, auctioned off here. The first one, let's be clear. The first one is a complete and box copy. It does not have the all-important cellophane. I want you to know that. Uh, that's important. Uh, I have a complete and box copy also of The Legend of Zelda right behind me. Uh, so as we watch this, uh, if, if, uh, if you want in on the action... Uh, and uh, I, I might be willing to sell it to you. So here we go. It's a complete in box copy of Legend of Zelda. Um, it is currently at $5,000. <laughs> so I'll make the same offer. If any of you out there want your own boxed copy of Zelda, you send me five grand, I will come out to you wherever you are in the United States. Again, I will shake your hand. I will hand you your, your newly owned copy, and I will remind you. You make excellent financial decisions. So that is an open offer on the table. Uh, it's at 6500 My price might be too low. I might be, I you you might be catching me slipping, as the video game resellers like to say. You could catch me slipping right here and now. Five grand, you send me five grand, I will get on a plane and I will come out to wherever you are. And I will hand you a complete box copy of Zelda and tell you how smart you are. We will not have lunch or dinner. There will be no physical interaction besides a hearty handshake. Um, and I won't talk to you again after the interaction. But for your 5000 you will get that one interaction with me uh, in my compliments. Eighty-seven fifty. Wow, I clearly, folks... You will catch me slipping if you take advantage of this offer. I am, I am clearly, I am underselling myself. I am leaving money on the table, people. You could, you could, you, if, if you buy my $5,000 Zelda and I come and brand to you, you are also allowed to immediately look at me and say, caught you slipping, take a video and post it on YouTube. <laughs> Titled, I caught Doug slipping. What a goofball. You can't call me anything more hurtful than that. I do have feelings. You may call me a goofball. <laughs> Ten, holy shit! Ten thousand dollars before fees. Eleven thousand. I really, I, I'm starting to regret the offer I just made. I may have someone coming at me. Here. Um, I don't know what to say about that. Now, I granted this is like an early print run and all that, but it's still just a boxed game. Um, I have no words for that. 12,000 now before fees. So it's 15, six after, uh, let's pretend I didn't, you know what? I, I am now revoking that offer folks. I, I have the right to do that. I am revoking my previous offer. If you send me the 5,000, I'm just going to return it back to you because, uh, I don't want you really catching me slipping. And uh, I will be. I will. I will say. If you want my Zelda, it's ten thousand now. If you say, I know my worth. If you send me ten thousand uh, dollars, I will. I will sell you my Zelda. Now this here, we have a sealed copy uh, of Zelda. It is a later production run copy. Uh, and this is interesting. Uh, it is uh, sitting at eighty two fifty now. Uh, 8,500 now. I would like to think it's certainly going to get the same amount as the complete in box copy. It appears that it will be. It will be. Um, 
It is currently at uh, 11,500 before fees. That's 14.4 after. So even though it is a, like a, it was the main production run where they made millions of these, uh, regardless of that, it's still worth twelve thousand dollars because of the precious, the precious cellophane uh, that is so important. Uh, God bless the cellophane. Uh, those would you know you wonder. You, you, you know, they call America the land of opportunity. You know, you're supposed to have a chance. You can pick yourself off your bootstraps. You can start a business. You can sell lemonade. You can start a bakery. You can make money. And when you're sitting on a pile of money like Scrooge McDuck uh, with, with just a bathtub full of gold coins, well, what do you do with it? Well, this is the answer, folks. You buy cellophane. You buy video games with cellophane on them. And then you go to cocktail parties with your, your tuxedo and your monocle and your top hat. And you, and you just whip it out of your coat and you're like, look at this. 9.4 seals all the people. And then everyone loves you. No more physical contact because that's creepy. Everyone displays affection for you. <laughs> and you too can be loved and adored. You just need to... Start a business, become a self-made millionaire, and then buy that precious ah, mm, cellophane. Cellophane on video games. That's it. I've, we've, solved, we've solved the riddle. Now I get it. Now I get it why people are doing this. I felt, I felt super loved just talking about it. Now here's another Zelda, the third of our fourth. Now here's an interesting conundrum, right? This is a 9.8 sealed Zelda but it has a big honking price sticker uh, all over the front of it. Uh, so I imagine that is probably holding it back a little bit, although it is over $20,000 now, so I guess it's not holding you know back that much. Um, but 20 grand, uh, 22, even though it has been defiled, uh, uh, besmirched, by a, an unsightly uh, retail store sticker, twenty six grand so far before fees. Twenty eight, well, maybe not so much. Not so much. Interesting that unless something else later in the auction, and we won't we won't necessarily be sticking around for it, but unless something else uh, comes up, maybe a Super Mario Brothers. That's currently the baseball. Oddly enough, was the most expensive game so far. I don't think this is going to top it. Looks like it's going to peter out at about, well, it's at 30 grand now. Every time I keep saying it's going to peter out, somebody else bids, and they're bidding in $1,000 increments here right now, apparently. Um, so let's see what happens here. Oh, and there's a $32,000 bid. All right. Okay. 32 grand. My goodness gracious. 34,000 now. Interesting. Will it get to 40? That's what I'm wondering. It's at 34,000 now. 36. Uh, Cassandra Hammerstone, you think it's going to make it to 40? Yes. There were 38. Yes. That's a yes. Oh, we got, we've, we hit 40. So now the next question is, will it make it to 50? I am going to say no. I don't think it's going to make it to 50. I think it'll make it to one more bid. It's at 40. I bet it goes to 42. There it is at 42. Uh, please don't say that into the live microphone because Andrew Hammerstone made a ridiculous bid. And I just, I, I made sure her microphone was in fact muted. Uh, I do not want that to be constituted by the folks that hear the auction as a, as a, as, as a uh, binding bid. Oh, she's shaking her head. Yes. No, I promise you. No, no. If you want it that bad, pay me $200,000 and I'll walk across the studio room and hand you a copy of Zelda and I'll shake your hand. No other contact and <laughs> compliment you <laughs> on how smart your financial decision making is. It's 48 now. Uh, will it make one more bid? It's like a, it's like a, it's like a uh, what's the word I'm looking for? It's like it's like an emotional level, right? Will it make it to fifty thousand? Uh, nope, forty eight plus fees though, so it's in the fifties with the fees. Um, 
Here's the last Zelda, right? The last Zelda, uh, a 9.2. It's the it's the um, last production run with a, a gazillion copies sold. So that will probably affect the value. Uh, it's sitting at 8,000 now. I'm actually kind of surprised that it, if it doesn't cross the 10,000 mark, I'll be a bit surprised. But it could be that everyone has now spent all their money. Uh, if you look on the screen, it, it, you won't be able to see it. It's in very small print. Under where the auctioneer messages are, it says auction totals. So like the total amount of um, of all the hammer prices to date on this session, it's at $460,000. So we've sold here uh, 41 games, right? A total of 41 games uh, at over close to a half million dollars. So uh, it wouldn't surprise me if there's a, an effect where, you know, some of these prices start to come down just a touch, right? Um, they're going to do after this. We're, we're, you know what? I'm going to stick around for a little bit, a little bit more. Uh, oh, Vince Watson, by the way, if I win the one and a half billion, I will buy you some cellophane, Doug. Well, well, Vince, thank you. And I just like to say, I'll come out if you win. If you win the one point five million, I will on my dime. I will come out to you and give you the opportunity to gift me some cellophane, preferably with a cartridge underneath it, and I'll shake your hand and I'll say thank you for your great financial decision making. It's much appreciated. Now, if you'll excuse me. I'm going to go pawn this. <laughs> and I just run away. Thank you, Vince. Uh, we're going to stick around a little bit longer because I'm seeing some very tantalizing things that I also want to comment on here. Uh, Life Force, again, I also say that's a top 10 game. Uh, I feel bad that look at how little it's getting in relation to these other games. It's a, such a great game. Uh, and it's barely going to cross the $2,000 mark. Uh, I guess maybe I, we're all kind of like uh, coming down from the Zelda high. But I'll tell you what, no matter how this ends, it looks like it's about to end. Uh, things are about to pick up, as they say, because we are now going to get two copies of not Super Mario Brothers, but the original Mario Brothers, which was a black box title. And from what I'm seeing here... It looks like this is going to get completely bizarre. Uh, and then there's the Mega Man series after that, which, again, uh, probably one of the most popular franchises in history. Uh, so here we have the Mega Man. Now, this is a complete in box game. The first copy is complete in box. Uh, it's for us. It's for us, the pores, uh, to collect. Uh, it is an 8.0 complete in box copy. It is at $1,000. It looks like that's going to be it on that one, actually. Uh, very quick auction. Uh, it looks like, is that going to be it? Is that going to be it? Uh, no, one last, last minute bid's coming in. And now up to 1400 before fees. And now they're going to see if they, if there's any more bids. And it looks like, is that going to be it? Oh, uh, she's really taking her time on this. Oh, one more way. This auction, uh, the auction caller is good in terms of she knows how to really get the drama going and get those last second bids in. Uh, so now we're up to $1,700. Uh, but nonetheless, so this is going to end ultimately less than 3000 with the buyer's premium, right? So the, 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 uh, the commoners Mario Brothers, as it were, um, oh boy, some more bids coming in. Boy, 2000. Wow. What I think is happening here is there's someone live in the facility that's hemming and hawing, but then bidding it's, it's, it's one person on the internet bidding against one person live and they're really taking their time to see if either of the two competitors wants to put in that one last bid currently at 2,400 before fees. Uh, there it is, a close. So 3200 with fees. Now look at this. Look at this. Look at this. Same game. Same cosmetic condition. But the other one's three grand. This one has the cellophane, people. It's got the cellophane. And as such, $33,000. $30,000 worth of cellophane right there. That's what we got right here. 
We're bidding on $30,000 worth of cellophane uh, because it's got a Mario Brothers Nintendo tape underneath it. 35 now. 35 now. Um, so there you go. 35, 36. So again, as it stands after the buyer's premium, it's at really 46,000. The current bid's 36,000. 38. This, could this top baseball? That's the question. Is this going to top baseball? I suspect it might. 39. I think, I think baseball went for like 42. It's at 40 now. Wow, this is going to be the most expensive game of the day so far. But it's only going to hold that title, I suspect, for like five seconds. Because after this closes, uh, the very first Mega Man game sealed in the cellophane. Uh, and so I suspect that's going to take the, the, the high, uh, high water mark. But still 44000 now before fees on this Mario Brothers, and it looks like there's probably one or two people now duking it out. 48, it's going to cross the 50 mark. So this is this is now the most expensive game we've seen so far today. It's at 50 grand. Uh, it's clearly going to cross that. 55, wow, they're bidding $5,000 increments now. This is completely insane. 60 grand, it went 50, 55, 60. I want. I need to know who's bidding. Who's bidding sixty thousand dollars on the Mario Brothers with the cellophane on it? Sixty-five. So someone's saying I will pay a sixty-two thousand dollar premium uh, for the cellophane. <laughs> Seventy. And and here's the thing. You know, if you if you deep dive into this this. Market. Now, I'm not even going to call it a hobby anymore. It would. It's disingenuous to call this a hobby. This is the sealed games. This is not a hobby. This is this is a market. This is an. Uh, it's no more a hobby than the Dow Jones Industrial Index is a hobby, right? Um, eighty five, eighty five thousand dollars is the current bid before fees. Ninety. It's going to cross a hundred, isn't it? This damn thing's going to cross 95. It's about to cross 100,000. There it is. There's the bid. The $100,000 bid. That's 132 grand by the way after the fees. So it's a, so that tells me it's a 32% premium. Uh 100 now they're doing $10,000 increments. $110,000. Next bid is 120. Um who who's buying this? Like who 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 is valuing this? It's obviously an extremely tiny market. Cuz now whether you like it or not, that's not even the point. It's who has the financial resources. Um who, what is what is the potential audience? Like we talk about in TV and in you know I'll lump YouTube and TV and broadcasting. Whenever you do content, or you're going to make content, you think about what is the addressable audience, which means what is the total number of people in the universe that would have the means and access to watch this or to buy this. Um, so obviously, you know, we're in a world where there's billions of people that might watch this show, right? But with the $160,000, which is really over $200,000 with premiums, what is the amount of potential buyers that exist that could throw around $200,000 on cellophane. Uh, I don't know. Maybe there's more than I think. I mean, it can't be. It's certainly not in the millions. Uh, maybe it's maybe it's a couple hundred people, a couple thousand people. I mean, like, that not only have the money but would give a shit about this, right? Um, those Because that's, that's not, a, you know, a completely overlapping Venn diagram. It's millionaires and billionaires and folks who believe in the sealed video game investment vehicle, right? This has to be a three-figure amount of people at this point. $190,000 is the current bid. So looking for the $200,000 bid on this. Uh, will they get it? No, they did get it. 200. So 200, 264 all in. Um, Man, I don't get it. Like, I, I mean... I do. I do get it because obviously it's happening, right? You can't say you don't get it if it's literally an event happening in front of your face that is a thing. 
Um, I don't, I, I struggle to understand it. I guess that's where I'm coming from. In the same way, I never understood NFTs. Like, and I think by and large, the rest of the world has come to the conclusion that it's all a scam. Um, but who is this person? Here's what I'm wondering, right? So now we're at 220, so 288 after fees. So if this person believes they're going to make a profit, they have to find someone now that is willing and enthusiastic. They there, closed there, 288000 after fees, uh, paying them $300,000 for that game. And I just wonder myself, how many people can you market to? But I guess we will see, won't we? Uh, oh, she's, t- <laughs> she's taking a breath. She needs a cold. Uh, I believe we have the audio, off, but she said she needed a cold shower after that. So we'll get. Oh, I got the. I got the death glare for that. Ah, I, I can't. I can't be spicy. This is reclaiming retro. Doug is a little spicier, by the way, than Wordle. Doug, if you haven't already figured it out, there, there's. It's 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 a it's, a, it's this it's this brand. Uh, okay, no, they called in the relief pitcher there. <laughs> the closer has come in now. Uh, good job, by the way, for that first auction. That that lady is t- legitimately talented. Honest, honest to goodness, uh, to get that kind of value and all those bids, she definitely knows her stuff. Uh, mad props. Uh, so now let's see what this gentleman can do. This is the first Mega Man game. It's of course got the cellophane. Uh, it's a nine point six. I'm expecting this to go crazy. It's sitting at forty three. Of course, now I don't know what to think. Uh, I don't know if this goes to 220000 <laughs> And I was thinking, I was here, was just saying a few minutes ago, everyone heard me, oh, Mega Man's going to blow past Mario. Um, I'm very, very wrong about that. Obviously, extremely wrong. It looks like it might be closing here. Is it going to close here? Nope, 46. But I, I seriously doubt it's going to matriculate up from 46 to 220. Uh, despite the fact that if we're being honest with ourselves, Mega Man is a better game than Mario Brothers by far. But again, I think it's about, I think it's about how desirable the game is. And again, if you're bringing that Mario to that cocktail party, you will be adored by everyone. Um, so that's Mega Man. It got 57,000 after fees. Uh, now watch what will happen here. They go through two, three, four, and five, and the the value is going to drop off probably pretty substantially here. Uh, I know with the Mega Man that the first one is the most desirable, and while the other ones are great for actual real video game collectors, I think we've figured out here we're not really dealing with the realm of actual video game collectors who won't perceive the number after Mega Man to be a good thing but a bad thing. So this one is struggling uh, in around 7,500 bucks. Uh, it looks like it's going to close it around then. Let me just take a quick peek and see what we got and determine whether we want to wrap it up here. If we want to stick around a little bit longer, I'm just going to take a second here and sort through, look ahead a little bit. Well, there's a few interesting ones here. Uh, how far do I have to stick around if I want to check out the Mario's? Oh boy. I kind of want to, Hmm. We are at game 47. Uh, if we stick around for 20 more games, we will get to the the five copies of Super Mario Brothers. Um, and I think it's worth it. We're definitely going to call it after Mario because I'm getting a little tired here. Um, but here's the thing. There is a 9.6 sealed copy of Mario coming up in about a few more. Um and it is at $230,000. <laughs> so there you go. You know, I'll tell you what, maybe we'll call it here. Um we're not going to we're not going to break any new ground in terms of epiphanies or anything like that. I think we've done an adequate job in this broadcast exploring. See that? Again, I I'll, I'll repeat what I said earlier in this stream. I'm not a fan of the sealed games. I'm not a sealed game investor. But it would be foolish of me to pretend it doesn't exist at all. Like, so we've always said with the, 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 this channel is part of its mission is to really focus on the love of the games and not the money aspect of it. Uh, so here we, we took our, our little peak. We dipped our toes into what that other side is that we find so foreign 
Uh, it is wacky as F. <laughs> and uh, I don't know. I mean, I think we've, we've got a good enough cross-section that uh, if you wanted to get an insight into this world, you've gotten it here in this uh, hour and 45 minutes of us noodling around with it. Obviously, folks are going to have different opinions, and I don't mean to – I'm not hating on people that – invest in sealed games or who love to buy and sell games. It's just not for me. And I, I know that the audience and community I'm looking to build are largely probably not going to see that as something that's in their wheelhouse either. But again, you know, we're just investigating and seeing what all the buzz is about. Uh, so I hope you enjoyed that a little walk through this uh, world. Um, there's a whole, there's a whole probably another few hours of this tonight when we're recording this, there's another session tomorrow. They do these every week. I don't think that we're going to regularly come back on this. We might once in a while for fun, check it out, but it's not going to be something we take super seriously. Uh, so there you have it. Uh, just a quick recap uh, while we wind up again. This is Reclaiming Retro. We celebrate retro video games, have fun with them, talk about them. Uh, we do a live stream on the regular on Wednesdays at 8 p.m. Eastern time. You can come in, uh, tell me what game was meaningful to you. If I have it, I'll play it. Um, and, and we'll also kind of like tell stories and talk about our experiences. And that kind of is actually the launch point to the games we play, not the other way around. Um, so we kind of want to start with, do you have a cool story, have a cool memory of a game? Uh, and that'll drive what we play rather than just the, the traditional let's play format where we just pick a game off the shelf randomly and play it. Uh, so maybe it adds a little more fun to the proceedings. Uh, please feel free to like uh, our, or subscribe to our channel. It really will help us grow. It's super appreciated. Get engaged. Let me know how you feel in the comments on any of the videos or, you know, uh, get in touch with me. Give me your feedback. Uh, I'm on Discord. You can get the Discord for us on the description of any of our videos. Um, so you can come check us out there. I'm on Twitter on Doug Mansland. I will tweet from time to time. Uh, I haven't decided if I'm going to buy my blue checkbox or not. I don't know. Maybe, maybe not. We'll see. Um, but that's about it for us. So thank you for watching. I hope you have an excellent weekend, everyone. Uh, and we'll see you next time for some more Reclaiming Retro.